The biggest myth in the piano industry is that newer is better than older. In many industries, that's true. In the car industry, the newer the car, the safer it is. It's got airbags and you buy a new computer, it has more memory than the one that was built six months ago. But in the piano industry, it's exactly the opposite. The golden era uh, for piano manufacturing was, let's say, between 1900 and 1930. Fundamentally, they were building pianos back then for different reasons than they're building them for now. That, that's critical to understand. Back then, everybody played the piano. The kids played, the parents played, the grandparents played, and the memories were created in the parlor room around the parlor piano, be it an upright piano, a grand piano. Uh, it was before radio and television and obviously computers and video games, and, and uh, that's what the family did. It was a very discerning public, and the piano industry knew that, and they were building um, accordingly. Today, the vast majority of people uh, that buy pianos don't even play. I think the statistic is 90% of the people that buy pianos uh, just want what technicians in the industry called PSOs, piano-shaped objects. The, the philosophy is different. You know, the manufacturers are, are willing to, to build to that mindset. Uh, it's, it's more to fit a price point today, that, that magic $5,000 figure for a baby grand. Uh, the manufacturers will accommodate that. They'll do whatever they have to do to build a shiny looking little black piano um, that you can fit in your living room for $5,000, sacrificing whatever they have to sacrifice. For a long time, the, the, the case made, the parts were made out of particle board. Now, believe it or not, it's compressed, recycled newspaper that they glue together and then just spray the finish over. Um, these golden era pianos back then, your grandma's piano, whatever, from 1900 to 1930 or so, it, it, it's made out of lumber core wood. There's no particle board in those pianos. They were built to last. Even though it may look uh, dusty and dingy in, 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 in a corner of your room, um, it's a diamond in the rough. Uh, you get it refinished, you get it restrung, you get new action parts put in there, and what you have in the end is a piano that is comparable to the very few hand-built pianos today, the Steinways and the Mason and Hamlins and to some extent the Charles Walters and uh, Baldwins and such and the European pianos, but, but you have it at, a, at about a third of the cost. I like to say that the least expensive way to get a high-end piano in your home would be to restore the one you have or to find a restored piano. If you want a high-end instrument, you can certainly get a less expensive used or new, you know, uh, Asian-built piano for, for less than it would cost you to fully restore a new one or, or, or a restored one, but it, it's just not the same instrument. You basically have two choices now in the piano industry. You have production line, which is, again, the vast majority of pianos built today, probably 90% of what's built today is production line. Um, mostly in Asia, you know, Japanese and Korean made pianos, or you have the very few companies that still hand build pianos, Steinway, Mason and Hamlin and such. Um, but I'm here to say that there's a third option. There's the restored piano. The restored piano is the same quality as these higher end instruments that they build today. If you opt for the hand built Steinways, um, believe it or not, they start at forty, fifty thousand. They go up to over a hundred thousand dollars. And what you have is a very nice piano, um, but it's a very plain case. Um, the raw materials that they have today isn't what they had back then. Back then, when they built pianos like this, this is a hundred and twenty-year-old Weber in Brazilian rosewood. These were this is first-generation trees. Um, today, they get second and third-generation trees. They got to piece them together, uh, and they've got some. Decent veneers today, but nothing like this. So you have the best of form and function. You have the, 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 the same quality as the higher end instruments that you buy today, but you have the character of the Victorian era, uh, not to mention the fact that it's, it's a fraction of the cost of a new hand-built piano. So if you're thinking that you kind of want to go in the direction of the least expensive piano out there, you're not going to find that with me. Um, what, what you're going to find here is you're going to find the restored American pianos. And because of the fact that these pianos were built with lumber core wood, um, they're as solid today as the day they were built a hundred years ago. So if you acquire one of these pianos, it's an heirloom. It's a piano that's been around for a hundred years. It's something that can be passed down from generation to generation. Um, and it's just a, it's just a wonderful piece of history.